Greetings everybody and today we're going to be taking a look at these mysterious jewel spaces. So back when I was trying to learn this for the first time, I think it was back in high school or something, um, I thought vectors were just these pointy arrows in space with numbers labeling them. Let's say one, two, three or something like that. I mean, that's how you're taught about vectors in high school. And I thought, well, vector spaces were just the set of all these such vectors. But it turns out that's the absolute wrong way to think about vectors and vector spaces. And it should really understand the proper um, abstract description of vector spaces to make learning this topic a little bit easier. So if you haven't watched my um, videos on vector spaces yet, you should probably do that. Link in the description or it's probably going to be in some playlist on my channel. And yeah, there's also the videos on examples and another prerequisite video to watch is the video where we discussed um, vector space homomorphisms and in particular we constructed the vector space HOM and VW which is just the vector space of linear maps between two vector spaces. Um, uh, and yeah, we will need this to construct our dual spaces. So watch that one if you haven't done so already. Um, but now onto dual spaces. What exactly are these things? Well, we need a vector space to start off with. Let's say V plus scale multiplication. And let's say this is an R vector space. Usually you would have, for example, C vector space as well, or um, in general vector space over some field F. But yeah, just to make things simple, we'll just pick R. And whenever I reference the dual spaces, I'll always be using R vector space spaces anyways so we'll just keep it like that for now so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be constructing what's known as the dual of this vector space that we have already this is known as the dual space um, and this is going to be a vector space in its own right as well now let's just I guess maybe recap on what a vector space is um, a vector space you start off with a set so let's say this is our set over here it's called v um, what is a set well it's just a collection of elements it's could really be anything we want in here, um, just a set of things. Now, this is just a set at the moment. Now, if you want to turn this into a vector space, what you need to do is define some new operations plus and scalar multiplication on this vector space. So these are two two operations you needed to find on this vector space and these need to satisfy the vector space axioms and if they do satisfy the vector space axioms then the whole entire thing over here this is called a vector space so the elements inside this set v they could really be anything he wants they could be uh, pointy arrows if you want them to be but that's not all they could be they could be functions as well they could be um, yeah literally anything so once you have your vector space over here then elements inside the set they're called vectors. So if you call an element in here, for example, an apple, if you put an apple into your set and you put these two operations on it and they satisfy the vector space axioms, then I guess you'll have an apple being a vector. Um, so a vector could be um, really anything. In this case, a vector is an apple, but in order for the apple to be a vector, well, it needs to be part of a set which you've made into a vector space. That's the abstract description of vector spaces. Now back to our dual space business. So V star, also known as the dual space, just like I have in the title. So as a set, what is this? Well, we're going to define this to be HOM VR. So in this case, we're working um, with an R vector space, so we map to the real numbers. But in general, if you have an F vector space, then this would be HOM VF. Um, so explicitly, this is just the set of all linear maps of phi, which take you from a V into R. So every single linear map you can think of from V to R, where R you think about as a vector space over itself, you put inside of this set, and this constitutes all the elements inside of this dual space. Okay, so at the moment, it's just a set. It's just a big box full of these um, linear maps inside of it. Um, we also need some way to add and scale multiply things. Luckily, we've pretty much already done that in the video on HOM VW. That's why uh, we should watch it. Uh, but we can define it nonetheless. We can have a plus and a scalar multiplication in here. And yeah, just I guess to distinguish it from the other plus and scalar multiplications or put a little circle around it, but really this is just um, something cosmetic. So if we take two elements of this set V star, then let's call them phi and psi. Well, this is going to be um, yet again, another linear map. We want it to end back in over here, um, but how do we define it? Well, if we act on a vector, we define this to be phi of V and then a plus 
sine of b. So this is the plus and the real numbers because these two are real numbers. And um, if we want to scale multiply an element in this set, let's say um, phi over here, then again, this is a linear map, which can be understood if we act on a vector. And we just define this to be lambda times phi of v. Um, so we know how to add and scale multiply elements inside of this set over here. Notice I'm calling them elements at the moment, but now we can check that these satisfy the vector space axioms, and indeed they do. I won't check them because that's incredibly boring to do. Um, but yeah, these satisfy the vector space axioms, and we define this on top of our, our set, its additional structure we add on. So since we have these two operations now, and then this V star, that's a vector space in its own right. So V star, um, with um, this plus a circle plus or circle scalar multiplication. Um, we might, might as well get rid of this. It really doesn't matter. It's still plus and scalar multiplication. Um, this is a vector space. In particular, it's also an R vector space, but it has some relationship to this V because well, that's how we constructed it. It's a dual to V. So this is basically the definition of the dual space. It's just the set of all linear maps from V to R. So just a bit more terminology, elements in in your original vector space V, you call them vectors, but elements in the dual space, you call them covectors. So vectors and covectors, they're very relative terms because it depends on what you choose as your vector space. So you just don't randomly say if something's a vector or a covector, you need to make a choice of well, what is the vector space we're starting off with. Then you can call elements in here vectors and then elements in here covectors or dual vectors is another word. Okay, so that's basically definitions and all of that. Let's take a look at some examples. I'll start off with this one because it's a nice and simple one that we can all understand. Um, let's take a V, our vector space, to be exactly R2, so just the 2D space. And I want to construct some covector, let's say, omega that lies in v star. Now, omega is in v star, so this is a covector. What is a covector? It's a linear map from v to r. So in particular, this covector um, needs to eat elements in v, um, or in particular r2, and it needs to spit out some real number. Now, yeah, there are many, many different covectors. Let's just make up a particular one. Um, just like there's a lot of vectors, we could choose a random vector, for example, one, two or something like that. We can do the same with the covector. Let's just make up a covector just for an example. Um, so it's going to take x1 and x2. And let's say it just maps it to, um, let's say x1 plus two, x2, why not? So this, this number that it spits out, that's definitely a real number. And I also claim that it's a linear map. And that's something you can show very quite easily. I won't do that. Uh, but this is an example of a covector. And remember, co vectors, covectors, they're, they're not these pointy arrows. Um, they're just elements. They're just things inside of a set. Even this ordered pair of here, don't even think about it as some vector in the Cartesian plane. Just think about this as just a thing. This is just a list of two numbers. Okay, that's an example of a covector. Um, let's come up with a two more, actually. Let's call this covector um, proj1, and you'll see why in a second. So this is just the label for the covector. I just call that covector proj1. Um, so this is going to be a map from R in, R2 into R, of course, because it's a covector. Uh, now, how can we make this work? Well, we can um, take a vector, let's say x1, x2, and we map it into x1. So it's basically the projection onto the first components. That's what proj1 is. And again, you can check that it's linear. But yeah, I forgot to do an example calculation here, but if you take your omega and you let it act on, let's say, um, three comma negative one, um, this is a vector in V, then let's do the calculation. Well, this is three and then plus two times minus one, but that's just going to be one and that's a real number. So it takes a vector, gives you a real number. And for example, if you take this covector, which we called proj1, and you let it act on, yeah, let's do the same thing, so three comma minus one, then this is going to give you three. That's a real number. Let's make one more example over here. Let's call this covector 
proj2. Now proj2, that's going to be a map from R2 into R yet again. It's a curve vector. And yeah, you can probably guess what it's going to be. This time it's going to be x1 comma x2. And this maps to x2. Uh, so it's just a projection onto the second component. Now, I want you to notice one cool thing over here. Notice that this omega, what is it doing? We take the first component and we add twice the second component. That's what omega is doing. So what we can do is write omega of x1 and x2. Um, well, this is going to be projection onto the first element of x1 comma x2 and then uh, plus two times the projection onto the second element of x1 and x2. So here we're putting in the arguments everywhere, but we can simply forget about the arguments and just think about these things as the maps themselves, because we already know how to add maps together in the dual space. So let's get rid of all this. So you'll notice something that omega can be written as proj1 plus two times proj2. So we've written one linear map in terms of, well, these two other linear maps over here, proj1 and proj2. And it turns out this is a rough idea of what a basis for V star would look like. So proj1 and proj2, they, they are linearly independent and you can actually write every single possible linear map in terms of proj1 and proj2. Of course, these will be given other names, which we'll call epsilon1 and epsilon2. But just for this example, I just chose the names proj1 and, and proj2. So yeah, with the dual space as well, um, you also have a basis because well, it's a vector space. In this example, this is one possible basis for V star the projection onto the first element and the projection onto the second element. So notice all of these are maps and we can add maps and scale or multiply maps to create new maps. And all these maps, those are covectors. So that was one example. Let's take a look at another example. Let's take V to be the vector space of all continuous functions on the interval a comma b. Not so sure if this was in my examples video, but you can check that this is a vector space because if you take two functions, you can, you can add them together and they're still continuous and you can scale multiply them and they're still continuous. Uh, so this is a vector space, it's actually an infinite dimensional vector space. Now what I wanna do is I want to construct um, a covector to this vector space. I wanna construct some covector, let's call it i, in the dual space of V star. Um, now, what would this I possibly be? Well, I, it's going to be a linear map which takes functions, continuous functions, and it gives us a real number. Now, we know in many, many examples of this, operations that take functions and give us real numbers. For example, we can take a function and we could make it spit out um, the integral from A to B of f of x dx and this is indeed a real number and you can check that this operation is linear because the integral operator is linear. So this i over here, this covector i, we can think about it as a map as the integral operator from a to b of something dx. So usually you just write in dx over here and think about this guy um, as a map uh, waiting to act on something here. So the operation of integration is a covector, which is quite cool. So another example, let's consider polynomials of degree at most n over the real numbers. And we're going to construct a covector, let's call it um, dA. Um, so this is in the dual space. Now, what could it possibly be? Well, it's going to be a map from polynomials into the real numbers. So I'm going to take a polynomial and well, I could choose any uh, linear operation I want. For example, taking the derivative of my polynomial and then evaluating at precisely a. So you can check that this is linear because if you take, for example, dA of two polynomials p plus q, then this is going to be p plus q derivative at a. But differentiation is linear, so this becomes p prime plus q prime. And um, this guy evaluated at a, and this is just p prime of a plus q prime of a. So this is linear. You can do the same thing for with the scaling as well. Um, so dA is indeed linear. So taking the derivative, then evaluating at a point is a covector. And you don't even have to take um, uh, the derivative first. You could just, for example, evaluate at a, and that is also a covector. So for the vector space of polynomials, um, the evaluation map, which is what this thing is called, is a covector. And yeah, by the same arguments, it's linear 
are, for example, P plus Q, um, and this guy evaluated at A is P of A plus Q of A. And yeah, we have two covectors. Of course, we can add two covectors together. For example, we can take E V of A, this is one covector, and then added to um, D A, which is another covector. And if we really want to do, we could maybe subtract um, three times I, which is that integral operator that I didn't quite define for polynomials yet, but it carries on from continuous functions. And this is a brand new covector. You can check that it's linear. Uh, for example, if we let it act on the polynomial x, then what is that going to give us? Well, that's going to give us, while well, we evaluate at a, that's going to be a, then we take the derivative and then evaluate at a, but that's just going to be one. Then we subtract three times the integral of x um, between, well, I didn't really define endpoints, but let's say it's zero and one, and that's probably gonna be something like a half. So yeah, this is um, a real number over here. So dual spaces, all it is, it's just linear maps. And the linear maps, you can add them, scale, multiply them, and they follow all the axioms of vector spaces. So that's pretty much all for this video. The motivation behind dual spaces isn't really too clear yet. Hopefully it will make a little bit more sense in the next video where we discuss the bases on dual spaces, um, which will be something pretty quite interesting. So stay tuned for that one. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see everyone in the next one. Bye bye.